السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Wherever you are, whenever you are I greet you with the greeting of Islam السلام عليكم أجمعين إن شاء الله Just would like to check uh, the voice on the Facebook page If it is clear, can someone let me know Because I'm starting the discussion today with you Regarding uh, George Floyd racism or uh, slavery and corona or COVID-19 facts or fiction. Today we'll be discussing these two issues and you might say that uh, what is the relationship between COVID-19 and George Floyd and this is what we'll be discussing it today. Yes, so this discussion in Arabic was extremely good and many people joined and uh, the interaction was extremely good and I could not be expect that actually the interaction with the people on the Arabic uh, page actually is as good as it was yesterday and I hope that the English one today will be better than yesterday today we'll talk about our talk will be structured into eight points point number one introduction then we'll talk about history of racism and slavery then we'll talk about Western occupation to other countries and how would they treated the native people. Then Arab behaviors in 21st century. Then the way for solution and who are those uh, are trying to divide our countries. And uh, number five, uh, number uh, six is how Islam treated and dealt with slavery and slave trade. And uh, how number seven is how can we deal with what's happening at the moment? Number eight, what is the relationship between George Floyd and COVID-19? Uh, first, let us go to the introduction and talk about some of the definitions of this uh, racism. Racism is preference. You prefer certain race to another certain group to another, certain clan to another, certain sect to another, and so on. This will be based on race, religion, language, and other uh, uh, social background. This is racism. The feeling of supremacy and or superiority and inferiority to other races or other groups. Other definitions saying that it is uh, the belief in that some people have got different, uh, different genes, different characters, different uh, things in their bodies, which make them superior to other groups, which is actually the supremacy again and superiority complex, which that, that will let them to claim that they have a special status, special status inside the law of the country. So to alienate and discriminate against others. It's every feeling of superiority or every manner of marginalization of other people uh, from the common denomination of the citizen of the country themselves. In my own view, in my own view, racism is a, 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 a sickness affecting our manner, affecting our behavior, affecting our social relationship with others. It's not a medical, it's not a genetic problem. It is, it is it's, a, it's a behavior, misbehavior, and actually misconduct in our manners and how we treat other people. In my own view, racism is ignorance, is stupidity, as well as is kufr of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us. How it is ignorance? We are ignorant. Those people who are the racist or the discriminator are ignorant to what happening in the surrounding, to the social norms, to the social change in the community, and they cannot deal with it. That's number one. Ignorance. Ignorance that actually of what's happening around them. And the stupidity, because they cannot comprehend and understand that cannot comprehend and understand that Allah with his knowledge and with ability put characteristic in every one of us 
And this characteristic actually is suitable for the time or for different times. And the ifu as, as racist do not look at what others have of characteristics, we are actually so stupid of not understanding how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a distinction between me and the others or both you and the others. It's also kufr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who created mankind and he knows best as he made mankind or human being the best of his creation on the custodian of the universe. Okay? And he is why he the one who made this distinction between me and you in my color, in my culture, in my knowledge, is my intellectual capability, in my height, in everything. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put there. So as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the first human declaration, uh, human uh, right declaration in Surah Al Mumtahana by saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakran wa untha, wa ja'annaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ala ta'arafu, inna akramakum an nafr. All mankind, we have created you from a female and male, or male and female, and made out of this male and female tribes, and nations, language, and everything. The purpose of this creation, and the purpose of the makeup of the nations and tribes is to know one another, to exist with one another, to contact one another, and to help one another. Inna akramakum the one amongst you, the best amongst you before Allah, is the most pious of you. This is Allah uh, knowledge of what He put in you since you have been created from the same male and same female. And in my own view, racism is something in our hearts, something in our blood as a bad behavior. Bad behavior, bad behavior. It's not a medical problem. It's not a medical problem. It's not a gene, as people say. So let me take you with me now to look about the principles of racism in my own view. How it is started. How racism can start in certain groups. How racism can start in certain groups. First of all, the lack or the non-belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lack of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the non-belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either we don't believe in the Creator or we misunderstand the creation of the Creator. Number one. Number two, following man-made values, man-made religions, which is very, very short term. Those man-made religions cannot comprehend and accommodate all the changes in the society because it's depending on the ability of the man who will be in his uh, capacity is limited to the time, limited to the knowledge, limited to what he or she had experienced. This is number two. Number three, it's following, following what we call it the limited ideology created by the man. Okay? And the narrow-minded sectarianism or the distinctive culture which makes supremacy and superiority of one race or one group upon others. Or the strange values which have been imported to us from different places. This is for what? For making certain groups or certain races to be superior or supreme to other races or groups. Number four in the principles of understanding how racism is starting is to make a quick win or a quick profit through dividing the community. This is brown, this is yellow, this is black, this is from this clan, this clan, this clan. And so it becomes smaller groups within our society or smaller groups within our country. So the enemies of humanity will come and divide us and steal our resources and take it away. This is how I look at it as an introduction. Introduction of racism and introduction for slavery. Point number two, the history of slavery. Slavery as ancient as the Roman time. And slaves used to be very strong partner in building such a great civilization. In the good old days. 
in the good old days. Actually, slavery started in Europe in the 15th century when people started to, by force, take black African from West Africa and send them either to Europe or to the state later on. But in the Arab world, this was there 700 years before that. But the Arabs have no excuse to trade, to have a part of the slave trade, particularly after Islam came out of the teaching of the Prophet came to them. In 1444, the Portuguese used to, by force, take about seven to 800 black African to bring them to Portugal. Every year from West Africa. In 16th century, Spain started to become a part of the slave trade because they wanted manpower to go to, to go to what? To go to Mexico and Latin America as well. Then become Holland, France, Denmark, and so on and so, and the slave trade become a booming in 16th and in 17th century. And the first slave, black African slave coming to America was in 1619. This has been mentioned by Mens S, Digital History, Slavery in Facts and Myth. This how can you look at the history and how can you look at uh, uh, the, the, the enforcement of slave to come to Europe and go to America. In 1719, too, after this uh, revolution or the war in America, the slaves started to gain some, some rights in America. But at the beginning of the 18th century, let, let us look at this myth. At the beginning of the 18th century, at the beginning of the 18th century, the first country to start raising the flag of abolishing or banning the slave trade was Denmark. Then Europe had a conference in Vienna in 1814 to ban the slave trade. Astonishingly enough, this coincides with the discovery of the steam machine in the in UK, in England, in Britain. When the, industrial, the modern industrial revolution in the UK started to happen, what happening actually, we started to say that we do not need more slaves to come to Europe and to America because we have the steam machine and we are developing it. So it was not for the goodwill of the uh, slave themselves, it was because there was no need for us to have, no need for us to have any more slave to come to our country. And this happened in the middle of 18th century and the beginning of 19th century. By 1848, Britain and uh, UK, Britain and the USA uh, signed a treaty to ban the slave trade forever. So, let us talk about, let us talk about what? Let us talk about Islam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died in 600, 632. 632. That means that the beginning of the 7th century. But before he died, he laid down the principles of of the Universal Human Rights Declaration. So coming back to say that we as Arabs and we are as Muslims have no excuse of being racist, becoming racist, or becoming slave trader. This is number two in the history. Number three, what the Western occupation to certain countries did to the native countries. Let us talk, I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk in details about it, but I'm going to talk about mention what happened to the Native American in the United States of America? What happened to the Aborigines in uh, Australia? What happened into the Erukas and Wheat and Eskimo or Meteor or Cray or Ojibwe or Sexica in Canada? By the people came the newcomers came to this area. What happened to the Maori in New Zealand? What happened to the Libyan by the Italian? What happened to the Algerian by the French? What happened to the Belgian, by the Congolese, by the, uh, the Belgium? Actually, when they killed more than 10 million people 
in Congo as well as cutting their hands till the people called the uh, Congo as the, ha the, the country or the land of the chopped hand. Especially at the time of Leopold II, uh, 1885 to 1958. What happened to the Mozambican in uh, by the Portuguese? What happened to the Indonesian by the Dutch, the Spanish, the Portuguese? And, and, and what happened to the Mexican and Latin American by the uh, Spanish as well? So when you look at this, I'm not going to mention at all or to go in detail to this, but I'm just mentioning this as steps of racial discrimination or slavery in this area. What happened by the Serb to the Bosnian in between 1992 and 1995 and how many young girls and young women being raped, become victim of rape in a systematic governmental organized rape against them? What happened by the, after the Second World War to the women in, and the young girls in Berlin or, or in Germany, when women in this country, after the defeat of Germany, wanted to commit suicide, knowing that there'll be rape, which happened, unfortunately, and more than two, two million women and young girls have been raped by the uh, military forces, the invading forces. Then what happened in Rwanda, 1994-1995, claiming the life of nearly 900 people between Africans and themselves. This is a glimpse of what has been happening over the last centuries to tell us about racism and uh, discrimination and slavery is not one size. It's actually affecting everybody, but Arabs and Muslims have no excuses because the Prophet Sallallahu and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have made this many, many, many universal human rights declaration 1400 years ago and more. Let us talk about some of the uh, uh, manners, the ill manners of some of the Arabs in the 21st century. First one are the laws which govern the uh, 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 people who are actually the manual workers, the people who are coming to work in these countries, especially the rich countries. Nationalization law, uh, immigration law, citizenship law, uh, granting citizenship or not granting citizenship, all this kind is restricting, even restricting the people, the workers, even if somebody is working in your country for 30 or 40 or 50 years, they don't have the right to become a citizen, this number one. Not only that, they don't have the indefinite leave to stay in such a country. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Even the marriage from a foreign individual who could be a good, good, good woman or good man is not allowed in some of these countries as well. This discrimination of this behavior of this authority is, has to be questioned. The law of sponsorship, a sponsor, or what we call them the kufala, is closer into becoming a slavery law in a new form, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately and go and interview people working in these countries, particularly from the foreigners who come to work in these countries. People have been living in a certain land for hundreds of years with their tribes, with their families, and this piece of land became a state. But the state denied their citizenship. And they don't have a passport or nationality while they are still living in the country after their family or their families or the tribes have been living in this area for hundreds of years. Granting visas to certain races and not to other races. Even renting cars, renting uh, houses, flats and others, they question you in details. You tell them, I am British, I am American, I tell you, what's your country of origin? What's that to do with you? And this is my contract, this is my income, so that, but they keep, because they don't want certain individuals to come to rent their flats or their houses. And this is happening in an area where Islam is the real religion, or is the religion, or the domain religion, or the main religion, which is actually contradicting the ethics and, and actually principles of Islam. The rights of the workers. With this sponsor or what you call it, the kafil. The way they've been treated in salaries, 
treating animals is better than treating those yeah, poor foreigners who come for few to, to save few dollars a day or few hundred dollars a month. It is really, really appalling. The daily manner of treating somebody working in a mall, somebody working in a shop, somebody working in, in a factory, somebody working as a, as, a, as a servant at the house, even to abuse them when they work at home with you, even to attack them, actually sexually harass the woman by the landlord or his children. And this is happening, it's been happening. I'm not saying this is a big thing, but this is not the manner of the people who are so-called Muslims, in whom the Prophet Sallallahu in whom Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala revealed the universal human right declaration to anyone, to all of us, on this piece of land. Even discrimination between workers. If I have a certain passport, and I'm a Native American or Native European, and somebody else having the same passport, same qualification, same experience, same certificate, but originally from a different country. There might be difference in the allowance between these two. Why to have this? And even the places where they live, they bought the workers. Sometime with this uh, sponsor or whatever, okay, bought five or ten people in a room. This actually when we talk about the people who are foreigner coming to work in a rich country. Let us talk about one country from inside. I give the example of a country which I came from called Egypt. We know that in the good old days as up to now, there is a, a South Egypt called Said. Yani, and the, charact the characteristic character of the man from Said called the Saidi. Saidi at the back of the mind of the Egyptian, even of the Arabs, is somebody who is stupid. Somebody who is idiot, somebody who is uh, daft, somebody who is very simple and naive and not educated. This is on the contrary, Saidi man is credible, integral, individual, a man of values, good manner, honest man, transparent and to the point. And he or can stand up for you to defend you even with his life. But we're still portraying him over the last century, more than 100 years ago, on the drama, on the television, on the cinema, as is the Saidi, which is a joke. All the jokes in Egypt about the Saidi. Distinction, differentiation between the people of the city and the people of another city. The people of the cap uh, capital and the people of the periphery, of the countryside, and, and, and. Even regional, even, even, even the people within the same city in different areas. Those are from area B, area. So, uh, like, actually, if I give an example now in, in, in Birmingham, people in certain area called uh, Solihar, they think that they are superior to the people in Birmingham. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Anyway, 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 anyway. Even in the sports, see what's happening between the spectators and the supporters of different teams. I was in the 60s supporting my team, which called Ahli in Cairo, and there was a playing against like Malik, the top two teams, like, like uh, now uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid, or uh, what do you call it in uh, UK, uh, Liverpool now, and Manchester United, or Manchester City, or whatever you call it. And there was a goal scored against our team, and we thought that was offside. Well, there was a right, and clashes, and uh, uh, we went outside the, the, the stadium to the main road and we were divided into two parts. This part for the people who support this team, this part, of, and we started to throw stones on the stick and uh, this kind of division inside the society. Who is benefiting from it? Okay. People are making jokes about the way other people speak, like the Chinese and the people from the uh, uh, Indian uh, Chinese subcontinent, Indo Chinese subcontinent. People not only uh, among us, the black, the black color, actually in Sudan, sometimes they call you, you are Azraq, you are blue, dark blue, sometimes you, call you are Ahmar, you are red, sometimes you call that mix. What is this? On what basis? And those people also are Muslims as well. People in South Somalia called Bantu, Bantu originally came in the 15th and 16th century as slaves and stayed in Somalia. There's discrimination between the Somalian 
and the Pantu. Discrimination also could be, or, or racism could be actually happening to the people who are having fair skin, blue eyes, or uh, what do you call it, uh, green eyes. Oh my God, she has blue eyes, he has green eyes. Oh, what is this? These are the creation of Allah Subhanahu And this is the ignorance amongst the Arabs and the ignorance amongst all of us. And we have no right as Muslims actually to have this ignorance since all the universal declaration of human rights has been mentioned by Allah to us and through the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago. What is the way out? Number number uh, what number uh, number five way forward for our solution. We are living now in such a society. The manners, the culture, the values, the tradition has been changed. It's not like when I was born in 1950. It's not like the good and strong family culture. It's not like when I came here in 77 and 78. And I was staying in Aberystwyth, in Wales, and my landlady has different culture to what's happening today. This 40 years ago. The culture and the value are changing by the hours, by the day, by the week, by the month. And all this division, or they call it racism, they call it slavery, whatever you call it, it's to divide, to divide, to divide. The society and to weaken the society. And I remember uh, in the good old days, my grandma, which was not educated like all of you, but she was very sharp, very very intelligent woman. She told me, Sonny, said what? Said, learn. Said, learn what, uh, my grandma? Said, learn from the British. Said, what to learn? Said, they have a policy called divide to rule or divide and rule. This uneducated, Egyptian woman in the 70s was telling me that without going to university or to school or to whatever it is. Dividing and ruling or divide and rule. This is the main outcome. In each state of us, there's a deep state inside it. Could be a bad and corrupt deep state. That's why today I'm talking about five or six points for us to understand who is behind this division or this racism or this slavery attitude in our society. Number one, number one, actually it is a bad, 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 bad businessman who have no manner and have no values and no integrity and no credibility, who only are interested to make the quick win regardless, regardless, regardless. Number one. Number two, those politicians and those so people called the, the literate, the educated, the elite, actually, who have no value and no status and no credibility in the society, but they would like to be seen as they are the leaders of the society and the leader of the country. Other uh, talk show presenters who are who have, yani, have, yani, affecting the society positively or negatively. Some of them quite often, most of them affecting them negatively because they are interested in their show, not what they show to you. In their show, they would like to be there forever. Speak for an hour, two or three hours every day. But what they show to you, it doesn't make any difference. Whether it's I'm an act of lie or act of hypocrisy. And you can find those TV presenter on Show, uh, uh, show presenter saying the lie today, then saying another lie tomorrow, then saying another lie next week, and forgot that the lie yesterday was so the lie tomorrow. It, it go in this status of hypocrisy. Number four, who are actually dividing the society from the bottom of it, is actually the, the so-called religious, the ignorant, the ignorant, the ignorant religious leaders who keep changing their fatwa, their religious opinion. Keep changing it. Keep changing it. Keep changing it. Whenever they wanted to urinate their fatwa on the public. Unfortunately, we, if, 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 if you go to the Arab world, you find plenty of them. Plenty of them. Because they can play with the Arabic language. They can play with the metaphor of the Arabic language. 
and they can play with the different schools of thought and fool people and keep draw, throwing their dirt on the public in this area. Uh, number five is those so, so called stars or superstars, theologians, thinkers, thinkers who are coming their hair this way and this way and this way. And this, way. Uh, this يعني, like well, uh, uh, public figures, public figures, public figures. They are only looking at their glamour, their status, and their, يعني, how they win the interest of the government and the interest of the public. They are not interested to save the, uh, the, the state or to save the public. Number six, uh, last but not the least, which is the most important and actually the serious one, the most serious one and the most serious, the foreign intervention. Who can be feeding this group or this group or these groups or one of them could be feeding all the groups. What do the foreigners want from my country? To make it weak. So they'll be able to steal the resources of my country. Like when you look at Africa, corruption is because of what's happening, foreign intervention. Unfortunately, it's because of foreign intervention. Here and there, and each, each, each company is trying to bribe people in the government or people in the sector or whatever you call them. And I mentioned this in the challenges for Africa uh, last week. So these six points are the beginning or are the serious points of what we call it nowadays, uh, making racism as a fact of life. Uh, number six, how Islam treated and dealt with slavery, racism, and slave trade. I'm going to read from a paper which has been published by uh, Suleiman Al-Dahyan, uh, aldahyan.s at makkahnp.com. He said, from the very beginning, from the inception of Islam, Islam opened the doors and the gates for the Arabs to set the slave free, to give the freedom to the slave. By doing what? By what? You find it's one of the eight categories of zakat is to make slave free in the Quran, Surah Tawbah, in the eight categories of zakat. Number two is setting a slave free. It's mentioned in the fiqh, the school of, of fiqh. If I kill somebody by mistake is number one or if I swear to my wife and they said to her you are like my mother so I can actually repent and set a slave free or if during the day of Ramadan I decided to sleep with my wife so I set a slave free to repent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or if I made an oath then I did not fulfill those. So four mistakes a man can do. The penalty is set a slave free. This is from the very beginning, more than 1420 years ago, before any universal declaration of human rights or before abolishing actually the slave trade in 1814 in Vienna by the European. This was in the 7th, the beginning of the 7th century, not, uh, not 19th century. 1200 years before Europe started to talk about it. Also in his paper he said Islam was keen not to call a slave, a male slave or a female slave. Brothers and sisters, colleague in the house. And the Islam linked Al-Ihsan to the parents, to Al-Ihsan to the slaves in the house or to the servant in the house. In Surah An-Nisa, number 36, Look very well after your parents and at the end of the ayah, called, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, So Ihsan is, is to your parents and actually to what you have at house or at home of those called slaves at that time. 
Hosna Ta'amu, to have a good relationship with them. And this happened when somebody decided to hit somebody on the face. Prophet ﷺ said, He who slap, slaps his slave or beats him, the expiation for it is that he should set the slave free. And this hadith is mentioned by Sharh uh, al-Nawi uh, uh, on Muslim, the book of Iman, the book, the, the chapter of uh, companionship of Mamalik, which is the slaves, and the Kafarat uh, uh, Allah. By the way, this one was said before the Prophet died in 632. This is before he died. If you slap the face or beat a slave, you have to set him free. Human, right from the very beginning. Be proud, please, of the teaching of the Prophet and be proud with the universal declaration of human rights by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in oppression, uh, I, I mentioned before, uh, the first universal declaration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayu al-nas, inna khlaqnakum min dhakr min unsa, wa ja'annakum shuwa bin al-qabla ta'arfa, O mankind, we have created you from male and female, and we, uh, as I mentioned it many times, universal, human, right declaration, 14, 100 years ago. Be proud. Al-zulm, oppression. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said in Surah Maida number eight, "Let no hatred see when you are in power, not no hatred of others to you make you swerve to wrong and depart from justice. Make no hatred of others to you make you swerve to wrong and depart from justice. Be just." That is next to piety and fear Allah. Ah, universal human right declaration. How to treat people at that time and up to now. Being good, ihsan, to even the people who are your enemy. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you. You became, because of your, uh, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous toward them, toward them. If they don't fight you, don't expel you from your house, but they still your enemy, don't, you have to be righteous and you have to show just to them. From being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Al Mumtahana, Ayah 6. I say it again Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. al the number eight. Your neighbor, your next door neighbor. See, Prophet ﷺ, Allah, then the Prophet ﷺ did not leave anything. Jibreel, Aisha said that Jibreel kept on recommending, recommending what? That, how to deal with the neighbor. Jibreel kept on recommending that I Treat neighbors well. Mazala Jibril, you see Nibel Jar, Mazala Jibril, you see Nibel Jar, Mazala Jibril, Hatta Grant, and I thought, I, 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 uh, neighbors well until I thought that he would order me to treat them as my heirs, to inherit from the Prophet. This is a book of neighbors in Sahih Al Albani. This is how Islam dealt with racism, discrimination, and slavery. 
the rights of the Zimmi. A Zimmi is the non-Muslims who are living in the country, in the state. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet Sallam saying, beware. See when I, when you see my finger like this, beware. If anyone, if anyone wrongs a contracting man, which is a Zimmi or a woman, or diminishes his right, or forces him to work beyond his capacity, or takes from him anything without his consent, beware, beware. The Prophet ﷺ was warning every Muslim, beware, I shall plead for him on the day that he will be the one to stand before Allah Taala to defend this man against the Muslim who did this to him. This is human rights. And this is the universality of the Islamic human rights. Sunan Abu Dawood, Kitab al-Kharaj, and Hadith number 3052. In the freedom of worshipping, in the Quran, Surah Baqarah 256, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, La there is no compulsion in religion. You say, all this, all this came to us as Muslims long time ago. So we have no excuse of practicing slavery, practicing discrimination, practicing, practicing racism. Another, uh, uh, yes, I mentioned this. Even the incident which happened between, Salma, between uh, Bilal رضي الله عنه, and uh, Abu Dhar Ghafari. Bilal was, you know, the Sayyidina Bilal uh, was black. So Abu Dhar was an Arab. And Abu Dhar told them, you are the son of the black woman. And he insulted his, umma, his mother. So Hazrat Bilal anhu, went and they complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi brought Abu Dhar as an Arab and Bilal as an African man. He said, have you insulted his mother? Abu Dhar put his head like this and said, you are a man have a jahiliya manner. And your manner is like the manner of the people who lived in jahiliya before Islam. This was a great insult to burn the heart of Abu Dhar. You know what Abu Dhar did? He took blood said, and he went down on the ground and put his face or his cheek on the ground. He said, please, Blal, step with your feet on my face and my head. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. But Hazrat Blal refused and he pulled him up and he forgave him. You know what the Prophet Sallallahu did not say that, but you are a, a Ibrahim Fika Jahiliya, you are just a man with a manner from Jahiliya only. No, 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 no. He bought another human rights declaration by saying, Ikhwanukum khawalakum, and the servants at your house are like your brothers and sisters. Like your brothers and sisters. The servants at your houses like your brothers and sisters. That's khalas, this is a fact. You feed them from what you eat. You dress them from what you wear. Okay? And don't ever let them to do something beyond their capacity. And if it needs to happen, you help them. If there's more work needed to be done, you help them. They eat with one new, from what you eat and they wear what you wear. That's why once upon a time, Abu Zar, after this happened to him, he was met with one, another companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and uh, he was walking with his servant or with uh, yani, and both of them were wearing the same clothes the same material the man was surprised Abu Dhar, uh, why you are wearing the same material the same, you can you can buy something nice for your slave or your actually uh, for your servant but why is exactly and he mentioned the hadith of the prophet and mentioned the incident which happened between him and hadra bilal rajalun even when the Muslims at the time of the battlefield of Al Ahzab, the parties or the ditch, they were, they were digging the, 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 the ditch there 
and it was the idea of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu arda. And the Ansar claimed that Salman is from us, and Muhajirin claimed that Salman from us. You know what the Prophet Sallallahu said? Salman minna ahl bayt. Salman is a part of me, a part of my family, a part of my uh, small family and big family from Ahl al-Bayt. Great man to accommodate everybody to his companionship. That's why he made the brotherhood between Suhaib, originally from Rome, Salman the Persian, Suhaib the Roman, Salman the Persian, Bilal the African, and Muhammad or uh, Abu Bakr and Umar the Arabs. And in hadith mentioned by Umm Hani and Abi Imama in, in uh, Radiallahu Anha, in the Tabarani, he said, As-Subbaq Arba'a, the first amongst people are four. The first amongst people are four. The first of the Arab is myself. Because this is regarding Islam, which is the first Muslim. As-Subbaq Arba'a. Ana Sabiq Al-Arab, Suhaib Sabiq Al-Rum, Bilal Sabiq Al-Habash, wa Salman Sabiq Al-Fors. The first, the first, the first in Islam are four. I am a head of the Arab. Suhaib is the head of the Roman. Salman is the head of the Persian. And Blal is the head of the Habash or the African. In this hadith, he put himself on the same platform وسلم, with an African, a Persian, and the Roman. Subhanallah, equality, fairness, sallallahu alayhi wa there's no right, there's no excuse for Arabs or Muslims to discriminate or to become racist. In the last uh, sermon of the Prophet وسلم, you know what he said? Khutbat al Hajjat al O people, your blood and your wealth and your honor are sacred to one another. As sacred as this day of the year of yours and this land of your your blood your honor and your land your blood your honor are sacred to you sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything is mentioned did not say all oh, you muslims he said, O oh people, or O oh mankind, Ya ayyuhan nas, Ya ayyuhan nas, Ya ayyuhan nas. Then he said, in the same speech, No sinner commits a sin, but it is against himself. Nobody can clear your sin for you. No father is to be punished for the sins of his child. And no child is to be punished for the sins of his father. All the blood all the blood feuds of the ignorance days are abolished. Dam al jahaliya haram. All the usharis, usharis, a riba of the ignorance days are abolished. But you will have your capital. Do not wrong others, and you will not be wronged by others. All people, keep saying, all people, his final ceremony was not to the Muslims what to humanity or people it was hundred thousand people was with him in the pilgrim but he was not talking to them he was talking about every citizen of the universe oh people you are all Adam's offspring and Adam was created from clay the most noble of you in the eyes of God is the one who fears him most. All people are equal, like the teeth of the comb, and that no Arab is superior to an Arab, nor is white person is superior to a black person, unless by virtue of personal integrity and moral rectitude.
ايها الناس again all mankind all people all people all people your woman have a right upon over you and a right for you you not forget the woman so don't come and tell me that Europe and America is the one who freed woman from it and gave her her right this is before 632 where Europe was at at that time he died at the year of 632 he said all people all people not all Muslims not all believers your woman have a right your woman has a right of, over you and a right over your woman have a right over you and a right for you fear God in woman and recommended them good oh God oh God I witnessed that I have reached that I, I deliver my statement to everyone this is how Islam dealt with slavery dealt with racism dealt with discrimination before 632 this is before Europe abolished slavery in 1814 talk about 630 625 and 1814 be proud be proud be proud of your religion and your culture number seven how can we deal with what's happening nowadays we know that george floyd was killed by a racist uh, a police officer we know that and since that time the whole world went upside down first ask is the demonstration enough of course not definitely not definitely not. demonstration is a sign to try to raise the awareness of the people and let them to get engaged to make a social change so what's next after demonstration i'll mention five points to you as a solution first of all build strong civil society organization and support the existing civil society organization who would like to make the social change number two make coalition with the existing platforms who are trying to make the social change number three making a lobbying groups a pressure group on the decision makers on the legislators on the members of the parliament the members of the house of common on the people who actually making the decision in the country on the prime minister on the president on the ministers on on everybody know how to lobby number four make coalition with think tank and research institute and change your demand as change your demands as a, a demonstrator into written papers into written papers and change the written papers into a document to be discussed with the decision maker of the country and to change it from just a paper of research into a law which called human rights law this number four number five the substance or the subject of human rights the subject subject Make it as a foundation, the foundation of our culture, our social norms. And make it like a, a subject to be taught in the primary, secondary school, and in the university. It's number one, as human rights subject. Number two for human rights as well, is to become one of the uh, points of the constitution of the state. They are part of the constitution of the state. Number three about human rights, it becomes a necessity for employment. The, your, your record of human rights to become a necessity for employment and promotion and accountability. Number four, we should not allow people to 
spoil or to mock human rights issue in drama, in cinema, in all these sort of things. Number, uh, the following point is we should punish those people who abuse human rights. Punishment could lead to imprisonment according to the law. Then we should actually deprive the people who abuse human rights from the civil rights for a certain period of time according to the law. The last and not least, it should be a part of the criminal record of the individual. So you cannot take it away. This is how you can change your demonstration into human rights law and to enforce it and keep enforcing it. Demonstration by itself is not enough. The last point and not least one is, is what is the relationship between George Floyd and Corona? What is that to do with George Floyd? Uh, we know that George Floyd was killed on 25th of May 2020 in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, and 22 days ago. 22 days ago. But the demonstration did not stop. It spread like a pandemic, like Corona itself. Like the pandemic of Corona. Okay? From United States of America to Canada to Europe to Africa to Asia to New Zealand to Australia and to others. Millions of people came out at that time. So what does that to do with Corona? You have seen the demonstrators. You have, you have seen the clashes with the police or the clashes with the right wing move, the, the, the right wing extremist. And you have seen that the demonstrators did not observe the social distances. And some of them, maybe half of them or more or less, did not wear the mask. By not doing this, we expect the corona in America, different states, or Canada, or Europe to be on the rise. Isn't it? This is how we have been taught over the last seven months, the social distancing, the mask, and all these sort of things should be expecting. The big ask now, the big ask now, the big ask now, is the corona positive cases is on the rise in these countries or not? In another way, is corona is a fact or is a part of the conspiracy theory as a fiction? This is something you have to question the people after all this huge demonstration, what's next? What's next? What's next? Is Corona is a fact or a fiction? As actually we uh, uh, ask this question for all of you. I thank you very much for being patient to listen to me over that time. And unfortunately, the weather here is uh, it's raining heavily. That's why I lost the connection on the Instagram unfortunately and uh, if you have anything for me uh, you're most welcome to send me a statement or a comment or a question so I'll be responding to you inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.